All right, welcome back to part two of our uh, little game here. Um, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to jump right into creating a tile set for our world. And so the first thing we're going to do is make a 2D scene. And this is actually a new function I just learned. Um, so we're going to name this tile reference. And this might look strange, but stay tuned. It'll be pretty cool. So first thing I'm going to do is make sure that we have the grid snap on, so that way we see the grid. We're going to scroll down all the way to floor. That's the first thing we're going to do. We're going to have floor. And then we're also going to use wall. We're going to search up wall. And we're going to want the left one. Make sure that everything is in 2D node, by the way. Uh, we'll actually name this to tile reference. And then we'll also put the right, the left mid right, I suppose. Um, and then we're also going to need these two. And then we're also going to need, sorry, let me just look at my reference. Wall top, where is it? Wall top left, here we go. We're gonna need this. And we're also gonna need this and this. And I believe that is it for the these walls. Now we're going to take these walls and just put the mid right. Oh, that's the right. Yeah, that's the right. We're gonna move that there. And then mid right there. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take all of this and drag it back into reference. Make sure that it's all child of reference. All right, now this is the fun part of the tile reference. The reason we're doing this is because I could just make the tile set itself without doing this, but we want collision with these things. So what we're gonna do is go into each one. We're not gonna go into floor, floor doesn't have collision. Now let's do the wall first. So if I go in here and I add a static body, and then I add a collision shape for it, I can make it into a rectangle. And from here, what we're going to do is, I'm actually going to, okay, I'm gonna do the same thing one more time for this, and then add a collision shape. And then I'm just gonna duplicate this by doing Control D a few times. And now I'm just gonna drag one into each collision or into each sprite. Wall left, and then we also need one here, and then we also need one here. Duplicate one more time, one more time. All right, there we go. And now what we can do is select one, hold control, and we're gonna select each one, each one of these. And then we're going to go into transform and we're going to make sure it's all at zero, zero. All right, now what we can do is select each one. Once again, the collision shape itself. I'm actually not 100% sure this will work, but we're going to have to try anyways. And then new rectangle shape. And now we, I'm pretty sure we should have a unique one. Ah, okay, never mind. Don't, don't select all of them. We're going to do them one by one. So make a new. Rectangle, make it fit. All right, and this is what your screen should look like now. Um, this is very, now this is the very cool part. Now that we have all the collisions set up, we can go into C on the top left. We're going to convert to tile set. And then we're going to name it tile set. Now we'll just do tile set, that's fine. And then merge with existing, there's no existing one, so it doesn't matter. And then save. And now if we go up here and close this and then Close the search, sorry. Uh, we can see our tile set right here. And if we double click it, we can see all our 
tiles right there. And so to use this, what we're going to do is we're going to actually create a tile map. And this will be tile set. Uh, tile map. We'll, just, we'll leave it as tile map. We'll save it into the main world. That's fine. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take the tile set that we just made. We're going to drag it into the tile set. And so now we have an automatic made thing. All right. And then one, two things that we're going to want to edit is the cell size is going to be 16 by 16. And the custom transformation, we're going to do the same thing. And now the transformation is fine. All right. Now we're going to close this. I'm going to close the tile reference. And in our world, we're going to go, we're going to add two things. We're going to add a Y sort. And we're going to add our player into it. And we're going to rename this to, let me just check my reference. I'm going to name this to player for now. And then for the world, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the tile map. And I'm going to drag this above the player. And then I'm going to add another tile map. And I'm going to name this one walls side. And then I'll leave that as tile map. <laughs> so the reason we're doing this is because there's going to be overlaying things. Um, you'll kind of see in a second. So the first thing we're going to do is for the tile map, we're going to, ooh, first thing we want to do actually is make sure the transform gets set to zero, zero. Otherwise the tiles are kind of messed up. There we go. Um, the first thing we're going to do is add the wall on the top. So you can kind of change this around as much as you want, but this is how I'm going to do it. So I'm going to zoom out a little bit, make it a little bigger. And then now this is why we have the wall side. So this is why I duplicated it. Some tile sets, you don't have to do this, but for this one, unfortunately you do. So here you can see, I want the wall to be on top of this tile. However, if I tried that here, it would erase that tile. So that's why I have two tile sets or two tile maps. And the wall side is going to be the side wall, essentially. And we're going to just draw the side wall. And now that we have a little bit of wall in our map, I want to test this. So let's live test. Ah, we don't need that yet. I'm going to delete that. Oh, replay. And now there is collision with the walls. Awesome. Let's see, something is wrong here though. This one is not set to zero, zero, that's why. Okay, and we're, I'm just gonna finish this. So I'll do here, we have the wall left and the wall mid. And then wall left, wall up, and then wall top. All right, and then from here, what we can do is go to tile map. I'm going to floor, and we can actually use this little tool here, bucket fill, and just fill it out. Oh, that is so strange. Okay, I see the problem. Okay, so what we're going to have to do is actually draw it out first. So let's draw it out. And then fill. Okay, there we go. Now we have our little arena here, and I can play it again. And I can move, and I collide with the wall, which is cool. All right. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to go into our player, and we are going to add a camera, right? Um, in our player, we're going to add a camera. So search up camera 2D. And now, what we're going to do is go into limit. I'm going to make sure the left and top are zero, zero. And the right will be 400. And the bottom will be, I'm going to have to zoom in a bit more here. We'll take a little guess and say 1920, 192. Sorry. So now, now when I move, it's not going to work. I have to make it current. Now when I move, the camera follows our player. And it doesn't go outside of this range. So if I did not have the limit, I'm going to reset this, it would do this. And I would be able to see outside of it, which we don't want. I'm going to set it back to 400. And I'm going to zoom out now. 
and you can even play with the zoom a little bit. So you can do 0 0.8, 0 0.8 to zoom in a little bit if you wanted, or if you can zoom out, whatever you want. I will keep it at one, and that's good for me. All right, next thing we're going to do, um, I believe, is that we're going to add, I just want to actually explain something real quick. The reason why we added the Y sort is because, as you can see, the player is above the wall. However, if I were to move our player up here, okay, well, well one, it would be behind the the tile, which is so you wouldn't even be able to see it. Ooh, it's hard to notice here, but I'll, I'll explain it a bit more later. But once we add in a monster, it would be, it wouldn't work well with the player. So it wouldn't look realistic. So I can actually show that right now. I'm going to add a new player, or not player, but monster. So we're going to add a kinematic body as the base node. I'm going to name it zombie. I'm going to name this um, friendly zombie. I'm going to save it. And I'm going to make a new folder for this. I'm going to say mobs. And I'm going to make another folder. And this will be friendly mobs. Now we're going to go back and we're going to actually make another one. This will be hostile mobs. We go back one more time, go to friendly mobs, and we're going to save this as a friendly folder. All right. Now, there's a few things we want to add. We want to add an animated player, animated sprite. We're also going to add a collision shape. We're going to make sure it's all a child of the friendly zombie. All right, for the animated sprites, we're going to make a new sprite. And um, we're going to go into mobs. Or we don't even have to. We can just search up zombie. And there's a bunch of zombies here, but we're going to use the tiny zombie for now. It's like the starter one. I'm going to click the sprite frame. This will be the title. And then we'll also have the run. So now we can drag in the run animations, also drag in the idle animations into the idle frame. And I like to set it to seven for the speed. You can set it to whatever you want, but I think seven is a pretty good speed. And we can test it by playing it. And so that's the run. And we can also test the idle. And now we give it a shape. We'll give it this guy. We'll kind of make it kind of tiny. All right. I'm actually going to make it a capsule as well. Make it 90 degrees, turn it, make it a lot smaller. All right, there we go. That is our little collision for our player. And now what we can do is all right, I'm going to show you why we have the Y sort. So if I drag in, where is it? Friendly mob. If I drag in this guy, and I have one on top, one on above, or one below. I'm not sure why it says player two, but yeah. All right. Ah, I have to move one of them so they're not on top of each other. All right, let's replay it. So now the problem is. Ooh. Okay, it kind of works in the Y sort. So as you can see, it works fine. When I'm above it, I'm behind it, essentially. And when I'm in front of it, I'm the zombie is behind me, right? Now, if I did not have the Y sort and I did this, now, OK. Ooh, does it work? Yeah, it does not work. I'm always going to be in front of this zombie. And I'm always going to be behind this one, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, because the order of the zombies, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to drag it all back into player. And this doesn't feel sorted. So I'm going to add another Y sort. Because we're going to have a lot of friendly zombies inside of this one. So this will be friendly mobs. And we're going to actually delete. Yeah, we're going to delete both of them. All right. Now, um, what we're going to do is test it one more time just to make sure everything's working fine. Awesome. Uh, everything seems to be working fine. Uh, one thing I'm going to change for you guys is I want you to add a spawn click button or a spawn action. So I already, I've already added it. 
you can add it. And then I'm going to, I changed my click to the right button and the spawn is going to be the left button. So I've changed it a little bit, but you can change it to whatever you want. But this is what I'm going to do. All right. Uh, next thing we're going to do is go into world and we're going to, you're going to create a, a script for it. Um, unless you already have one. So create a script for it. That's going to be your script. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to basically create a way to spawn these zombies. So we're going to make a constant variable called friendly zombie. And we're going to preload it by dragging in the friendly zombie. And so this is preloaded our, our scene, which is the friendly zombie, into this variable friendly zombie. Right? So now, we're going to check for input, input event, if event dot is action, uh, we'll do released spawn. Then we are going to create a new variable, fighter one, or we'll do friendly, we'll do friendly zombie one equals friendly zombie dot instance. It's a function, so I want to make sure quotation marks or whatever there. And then we're also going to, yeah, we're going to edit its position. But to do that, um, we have to do friendly zombie one dot equal global position. Um, we are going to do global mouse position. So get global mouse position. And then we're now we're going to add the, the, the thing that we just made. So here we instance this variable. We've created the actual zombie. Here we're just editing the zombie. We're going to edit the position. And here is where we're going to actually add it. So we're going to add it to this friendly mobs. We dot add child. And then we just add, add that child. And so now, if I live test, Every time I click, it should create a zombie on top of the mouse. So now we have a bunch. There you go. So now we have a little spawner. And these are our friendly mobs. These are our zombies. And you can collide with them. Um, next video, I might change it so that we don't collide with them. But for now, this is good. We have a bunch of zombies. They don't do anything yet, but we can spawn them and kind of trap yourself, which is funny. Um, I think I'm going to end the video there. I think that's it for this video. If you like the video, um, subscribe. Um, it helps a lot to see people subscribe to my videos, and it definitely motivates me a lot to keep making these videos. Um, so if you like, if you did like the video, like it, please. Um, comment as well. The comments definitely help and motivate me to see them. When I see them, it definitely helps and makes me think, wow, I should make more of these videos. People actually like them. Um, so yeah, I'll see you guys next time.